Praise the Lord. We are privileged once again to be here to bring the heart of God to the people of God. We want to bless the Lord so much for the gift of life that he has accorded to all of us to be alive to death. Father God, we thank you so much. Thank you for protecting all of us. Thank you for giving breath for, to Reverend Moses and the wife Hopkins. Thank you for giving a breath of life Pastor Elijah and Gladys, the wife. Thank you for the ministers of this church. Lord, we bless you. Holy Spirit, even as we speak the word to your people, we pray that you, you use us to do exactly what you want us to do. And at the end of the day, all the glory remains yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest come. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and extend it someday for. By the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the, for the dear Lamb of God, let it glory above to bear it to die. The old rugged grows till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged grows and exchange it. Someday for our crown. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. God is so good. Always in this service, we call it the miracle service. This is where we expect the hand of God, the move of the Holy Spirit, to do a great work in the lives of His people. But as I was preparing to come, then I said, what, what exactly should I speak about? So this is what dropped in my in my heart. The book of Matthew, chapter number twenty-two. 
And verse number 29. Jesus replied, Your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. Did you hear that? Your mistake, oh, you go astray. Because you do not know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. I've lived for some time. I've been in church for some good time. I've heard and I've seen God touch his people and miracles and signs and wonders happen. But these things don't just happen because God has all the power. He has to demonstrate it any time. If it is so, why do we have sick people in hospitals? Even when we move out of here, we shall find someone lame there, someone blind, someone there. We shall find some needy, someone there. But God is so powerful. Why it doesn't just happen like that? The Bible says because of his greatness and because of his mercy, and because of his sovereignty brings rain to the good and to the bad. He shines, his sun comes and shines to the good and the bad. But now Jesus comes and says this is your mistake. You don't know the scriptures. So today I want to share with you some good scriptures that will help you be delivered. That will help you move out with your miracle. I'm going to read the book of Isaiah. Let's look at it with the new LT version, the book of Isaiah, chapter number 53. And we are going to be rotating about that book. Isaiah chapter 53. We'll begin with verse number 3. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief, we turned our backs on him and looked at the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yeah. Gweba Gweba Kweka Amaso Gabwe Bweba Munyom Bwea Nyome Bwa Bwatio Nebatam Nebatam Mani Nebatam Itamu Kabuntu. This is the guy who says On a Muntua Gamba. This is your mistake. You do not know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. Because he was despised and rejected. And he was like a man of sorrows. That means if you accept him. You believed on him. You are not to be despised. Praise be to God. Look at it in verse number 4. The Bible says, Yet he, he, it was our weakness he carried. So if he carried our weakness, why are you here seated in church walking on that street still carrying the weakness? Your problem is you go astray, you do not know the scriptures. 
He carried our weakness. Look at it with verse number 4. 5. But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. That's why we say by his stripes we are not healed. We were healed. So if you get to know this, you claim it. You remind him. Jesus, remember 2022 years ago, you were whipped so that I could be healed. So you sickness in my body, you are not supposed to be here. I am healed. Actually, I was healed. Look at verse number 6. All of us, like Fe- sheep, have strayed away. Fe- we left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Why are you still walking sinful? Because the Lord laid his sins unto our sins unto him. Did you know that? You go astray because you do not know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. Look at verse number seven. He was oppressed. And treated harshly. Yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And that the sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. What should be your take? He was oppressed and treated harshly so that you and me should not be oppressed. Why are you talking to us as if you are oppressed? You even want to show everybody as you are walking that for you you are walking as an oppressed person. You go astray because you do not know the scriptures. Walk straight. Your head up and tell everybody he was oppressed that I should not be oppressed. Look at verse number 8. He says, unjustly condemned. He was unjustly condemned. He was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants. That his life was cut short in the midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of, of my people. I lack that word that his life was cut short. Because of our sins. So my life should not be cut short. Tell COVID-19. Tell malaria. Tell typhoid. Tell the cancer that my Lord, his life was cut short so that me, I should live my life whole. You go astray because you do not know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. Let's claim those scriptures. Verse number nine. He says, he had done no wrong and he had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. Look at those words. He had done no wrong. 
But he was counted as all. He would be dressed in a wrong. He was counted as a liar. For my sake. Brethren, let me tell you this. I've been reading the Bible. But this time around I came to this scripture. That even Jesus was counted as a liar. You remember that time? When he was about to be crucified. And these people brought case against him. And they said, this man is a liar. He said he's going to throw down that temple. And in three days he's going to rebuild it. He's a liar. He calls himself a son of God. And he says he's even older than Abraham. Yet he was just born here, here. So my Lord was called a liar. Just for my sake. So, no lies should be taken on my, on my side. You go astray because you do not know the scriptures. Verse number 10. The Bible says, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and to cause him grief. It was the Lord's good plan. So Jesus was crushed. It was the Lord's good plan. For your sake and my sake. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life. And the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. So the Lord's plan was Jesus be crushed so that me I am born you are born and we are his descendants. So tell the devil I am a descendant of Jesus. You cannot crush me. Because he was crushed. I should not be crushed. So what is crushing you in your life? What is crushing you? What, 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 what are you sharing as if it is crushing you? Read that verse. He was crushed for your sake. Look at verse 11. It says, when he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. For he will bear all their sins. I am counted righteous because the unrighteousness that I could bear, Jesus took it. Praise be to God. Look at verse number 12. I'll give him the honors of a victorious soldier. Because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many. And he interceded for rebels. So the Lord's plan to crush him and cause him grief was for my sake. He interceded on my behalf. Why do you walk around and people tell you you are not interceding? That's why you are in this condition. He interceded for my sake. Look at at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 8 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse number 9 you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ though he was rich Yet for your sake he became poor. So that by his poverty he could make you rich. You go astray. Because you do not know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. For because he was generous. And his grace. Though he was very rich. He was made poor that I will be rich. 
So why are you walking in a poverty situation when Jesus Christ was made poor so that you should be rich? Look at the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse number 36. I told you I'm going to give you a man of scripture. But now he said take your money and a traveler's bag. And if you don't and if you don't have a sword, sell your crock and buy a sword. What does that mean? He who has no weapon, sell what you have and buy a weapon. In the interpretation, we tell people what Jesus meant here was to go and buy the, the weapon which is the word of God. The sword. So if you don't have the word of God you are among the poorest people because you will not know the scriptures. You have to read the scriptures to yourself. Understand them. What do they speak to you? If you don't have the sword sell whatever you have go buy a sword and get these scriptures for yourself look at Psalms chapter 34 and verse number 17 what does the Bible say the Lord hears his people when they call to him for help he rescues them from all their troubles. You go astray because you don't know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. For the scripture has said, call unto him when you are in trouble and he will answer you. Psalm 107 and verse number 6. Lord, help they cried in their trouble and he rescued them from their distress. David is testifying that he, they cried to him in time of distress and he rescued them. Then why are you not crying to him? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you call upon him, he'll rescue you. Look at it with verse number 20 in Psalms 107. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Even when you were at the door of death, when you call upon him, he snatches you. Actually, he snatches you. So on what door are you on now? You are on the door of poverty. He will snatch you. Just call upon him. Are you on the door of sickness? You feel like you are going to die? He can snatch you today. Call him. Look at it in Psalms 50. And verse number 15. He says, Then call me when you are in trouble. And I will rescue you. And I will give you my glory. So you go astray. Because you don't know the scriptures and the power of God. The scriptures are there. If you don't have the scriptures, go sell what you have and get the Bible. Look at it in the book of uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse number 2. They sang a song and this is how it goes. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my savior. Do you also sing that song? The Lord being your rock. The Lord being your fortress. By the way, do you know what a rock is? Huh? And the Lord is your savior. You go astray. 
because you don't know the scriptures. Look at what the Galatians says, chapter 5, and verse number 1. The Bible says, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tired up again in slavery into the law. Christ truly has set us free. Make sure you stay free. You go astray because you don't know the scriptures. It's up to you to make yourself free. Why do you walk as if you are still tied up? You go astray because you don't know the scriptures. Sell whatever you have and get to know the scriptures. The book of John chapter number 15 and verse number 7. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. You go astray because you don't know the scriptures neither the power of God. He has said remain in me and my words remain in me in you. Ask for anything. Ask. Ask. Why are you still not married? You go astray because you don't know the scriptures, neither the power of God. Ask him. He said, ask and you will be granted. Maybe your problem, the words are not in you. He says, remain in me and let my words remain in you. Your problem, his words are not in you. So you go astray because you don't know the scriptures. The book of Joel, chapter number 2. Joel, chapter 2. And verse number 25. The Lord says, I'll give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts. The hopping locusts. The striping locusts and the cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. And verse 26, once again you will have all the food you want and you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Verse 27, then you will know that I am among my people Israel. That I am the Lord your God and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced. So if it is the Lord who sent COVID-19, now the scriptures have said, mm -mm, I want to give you enough food. Never again Will you be disgraced? So how, how are then can they tell us COVID is coming? Back? Uh -huh. God says never again. You go astray because you don't know the scriptures. Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 13. The Bible has said for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Why are you still living as if you are still in the kingdom of darkness? You go astray because you don't know the scriptures, neither the power of God. But today, I don't know what I've given you. And claim the miracle upon yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that sister. I pray for that brother. I pray for the one who says he's poor. Let them know the scriptures. For the scripture has said, you were rich, but you were made poor so that I be rich. Someone who wants to deliver a baby boy and she has delivered 
many girls. Now, because of the scriptures, the Bible has said, Remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask for anything. If you want a baby girl, receive it in the name of Jesus. If you want a baby girl, receive it in the name of Jesus. Why should you live as if you are still in the kingdom of darkness? For he rescued us from that kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. I pray for you, those who need a job, that you may receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, those who need to build a house, get that plot because heaven and earth belong to him and you are in his kingdom. Don't be the one like those who go astray because they don't know the scriptures. The power of God is with us because we have the Holy Spirit. I pray for you wherever you are for the word of God is not limited by space. He has said I send forth my word and set them free and snatch them from destruction. I pray that the Lord snatches you from the door of destruction wherever you have been in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and study the word. Read the scriptures. God is on your side. God is not mad at you. Neither are the pastors mad at you. The devil is a liar. Our God is a good God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.